Core 1, practice paper 2, question number 1. Now here we have my worksheet with question number 1. But if you check the, your exam paper, you'll in fact see it set out slightly differently. On the exam paper it says, given that x squared minus 10x plus 13 is equivalent to, those three lines are saying equivalent to, a x plus a bracketed all squared plus b, where a and b are constants. And then the rest of the question is the same. So it's set out slightly differently. It's always a good idea to have the exam paper in front of you just to see how we've written it compared with how I've got it on my worksheet. When you see this piece of algebra, you are expected to straight away say to yourself, ah, this is all about something called completing the square. And you need to recognise this as a specific piece of algebra and that in fact it is called completing the square. If you forget that it's called completing the square, that doesn't matter as long as you know how to complete the square. So let's have a look at this expression and complete the square. First thing you do is you put down a bracket and inside that bracket you put x and you look at the value in front of the x. The value in front of the x is called the coefficient of x and whatever that is you halve that and put that inside the bracket and square the bracket. So this is in fact the square. So you need to know how to work that out to check what's going on. So let's have a look at that. Let's look at a piece of, uh, piece of scrap paper and look at that. Now this means multiply x minus 5 bracket by x minus 5 bracket. So we get x times x minus 5 times x minus 5 times x and minus 5 times minus 5 is plus 25. Now in the exam, you wouldn't necessarily do this. This is me just checking you know what I'm doing. Now, rather than going through these one, two, three steps, you should be able to go straight from there to there. You square the first term, which gives you the x squared. You double the first term, in other words you get 2x, and multiply by the second term. 2x multiplied by minus 5 is minus 10x, and then square the last term. Let's go through that again. Quick way, square the first term, double the first term, multiply by the second term, which will give you that, and then square the last term. So as you can see, you've nearly got the same as that, but not quite. So if you write down x minus 5 bracket all squared plus 13, this is not the same as this because this actually also includes plus 25. So to make this line the same as this line you need to subtract 25. Now some people just do this bit straight away in their heads. But this is called the square and when you work this out, plus 13 minus 25 is minus 12. This is called completing the square, hence the term completing the square. There's the square and there's completing the square. So that's what they want you to do with this. Now it'll take me some time to explain all of that, but if you really know completing the square, then this would take you a matter of seconds. You don't need to write this last part down, but in fact we found out that A has a value of minus 5 and B has a value of minus 12. So can I just change my mind about having to write that down? It does actually tell you to find the values of A and B. So because it tells you to find the values of A and B, you would be expected to write this down. So there we go. Let's move on to part B. Hence or otherwise show that the roots of this equation are this. So here's uh, an equation. Let's just look at this again. When it's written like that, it's called an expression. 
when it's written with an equal sign, is called an equation. Hence means you can use what you've just done to work this out. So let's go for that, shall we? We know that this equals this equals this. So let's write that line underneath there. And use that to solve this equation. In other words, find the root. In other words, find the answers. So, moving on. Adding 12 to both sides. Finding the square root of both sides. If you square root this expression of x minus 5 all squared, you'll get x minus 5. And then square root the 12. We have to appreciate that when you find the square root, you should say plus or minus. But you don't have to say that on both sides. It's not necessary. Now let's add 5 to both sides. So you'll get plus 5 plus or minus the square root of 12. Now, we're not actually asked to solve this and give a numerical answer. We're asked to write it in this particular form. Show that the roots of this equation can be written like this. Well, it's looking something like this. Let's have a little play around with that at the end there. Let's rewrite that 12 as 4 times 3. When you have the square root of a perfect square multiplied by a non-perfect square, you can find the square root of that perfect square, in other words, the square root of 4 is 2, and put that outside the brackets. Now I think you'll agree that looks exactly in that form. I can stop there because it doesn't say find the values of C and D. We have to be careful when we answer any exam papers in any subject that we answer the question as it is asked. Over here, if I had stopped there, I might not have got full marks because it very definitely says find the values of A and B. Therefore it very definitely says give me the values of A and B. Whereas on the second part, part B, it says show that the roots can be written like this. It doesn't say and say what C and D are. So if I stop there I get full marks. If I then write underneath C equals 5 and D equals 2, I won't gain or lose any marks. There's something else we can look at in this question. It does say hence or otherwise. What I've done is hence. I've used the first part of the question to work out the second part of the question. But let's just look at what does it mean by otherwise. Well, instead of doing this, I could have used the quadratic equation solver x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if I'd have used this and simplified it, it would have ended up looking exactly like that. At least it should have done if I wanted to get the marks. And I would have got just the same amount of marks if I used this method. Lastly, if it had said hence and not or otherwise debatably you could have got naught for using this method hence means use the first part that you've worked out well, there's a lot to think about on that question even though in itself it's a question that could be done quite quickly if you want to see the DVD to show all the solutions to this particular paper, Core 1, Practice Paper 2, then you'll need to visit my website www.mathtutor.biz and buy yourself the full set of exam papers on Core 1. That's uh, set 1 that we're looking at.